once, I shall solemnly vow not to make a single joke about Ellie's weight. There was a time when I, Flying Scott, was just like all of you. A random child trolling through YouTube. Then I was young and foolish, whereas now I am strong, strong, strong. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Remnant from last video. <laughs> Where was I? Ah, yes. I became part of the mob who formed around Ellie Gedelia and attacked Heavy the Squid non-stop. I was blinded by mob mentality and I was, in those moments, nothing but a stormtrooper. But with a little help of hindsight, we now know better, don't we? So here we are. Ellie Gedelia. The woman to surpass Heavy the Squid himself. But in order to justify a title as bold as the one on this video, we have to go back. The year is 2018. Life was good, or at least less miserable than it is now. And people much better at exposing than me were some of the most respected people in the Splatoon community. Speaking of which, showtime! Enter stage right, Heavy the Squid. Heavy the Squid was a large Gmod animator, having previously made TF2 videos, but he has a dark side to him. Heavy was in an online relationship, because of course he was, which included sending pictures of himself and having sexual conversations with Ellie Gadelia. At the time, she was only 16 years of age, whilst Heavy was in his 20s. This unfortunate series of events led to LawTech Productions, at the time only me, hello, uploading a video called Inspector Heavy's Downfall. I deleted this years ago, but I do remember the dislikes being more prevalent than the likes, which, you know, which is, which is expected because biased fans will be biased. This was your typical downfall video, but without the polish of an actual downfall, and a younger version of my voice kill me. Enter stage left, pick surprise. By now infamous for his channel checker videos, back then he was but a small and humble 3,000 subscriber channel. After seeing his channel checker video on Lizzie Ratzical, LOL Attack, a th the script is written in the third person for some reason, I decided to hand over the evidence that Ellie gave me for the downfall video over to him, and the proverbial sh** hit the fan. And with that, on February 25th, 2018, the Splat Source community melted as the channel checker video on Heavy the Squid came out, properly exposing him for minor misconduct, among other things. With Pixelprice bringing the issue to light for an audience totally disconnected from the Splatoon Gmod community, more and more YouTubers started to cover the topic, most notable of which were Medi-Excalibur and Doomsday.exe, both of whom have now deleted their videos, rest in peace. Regardless, Everyone knew about Heavy the Squid and his erotic roleplays with a minor. And after the pressure became too great, Heavy the Squid deleted his YouTube channel and eventually all forms of social media. Heavy, being scum, decided that the best idea was to blame him deleting his YouTube on Ellie, in the hope that people would turn on her and send some of their hate her way. However, Heavy forgot that people outside of the Splatoon community have some common sense, and the complete OPPOSITE HAPPENED! Ellie got even more support and people hated Heavy even more for trying to shift the blame on the victim of his own sexual transgressions. Things seemed to go in the right direction for Ellie. She escaped the clutches of a pedophile and she had two communities backing her up, those being the Splatoon Gmod community and the TF2 community. But not everything is what it seems. For one, neither Ellie nor Heavy decided that it would be a good idea to scroll to the top of their DMs to show who started the roleplays, to show that the other person was a lying piece of <laughs> It's so stupid! Furthermore, behind the scenes, this promiscuous behaviour didn't stop, accounts being out there of Ellie having 11 boyfriends at one time. <laughs> Pair that with the first fake suicide this community knows, and suddenly, this sweet little girl isn't all that trustworthy anymore now, is she? Thank you for that introduction, LOL Attack. Without him, I wouldn't be doing what I do on YouTube. On the subject of YouTube, now would be a good time to look at another Splatoon G mod YouTuber. G of Craze 346. <laughs> Did I say 346? <laughs> uh, 
I legit don't, I legit have never bothered to write down the numbers behind his name. I didn't ken what the numbers behind his name are. Uh. In truth, Ellie threw Heavy under the bus. We don't know why she did leak the DMs, but Ellie, even by that point, was well known for clinging onto popular people. Did she leak the DMs because she felt unsafe, or did she leak them out of spite? In truth, none of us truly know. But what we do know from leaked DMs with Joff Craze is that Ellie was having erotic roleplays with Joff, which includes sending pictures of her feet intended for Joff to slap his salmon to, whilst the situation with Heavy was still in full swing. Isn't it a little strange that the same girl who was also happy that one predator was being exposed at the same time was happily complying with another, even more popular predator? That's a bit hypocritical, isn't it? Now I know what you're thinking. Scott, what you're doing now is victim blaming. I disagree. All of the comments Ellie posted under videos roasting heavy, most of which are now deleted, Ellie said that she wanted people to know the truth. And even in the interview with Pick Surprise, she claims to see the world clearer. Why would you say your relationship with him ended? Technically, it's, it's kind of... Okay, this is where it's gonna get a little confusing, but... That's okay, go for it. It was actually thanks to a friend of mine, I, like, become... Like, it helped me see the world a bit clearer and... So why, if the world is so clear to you, and you claim to care so much about the truth, why do you only show half of it? Even in that very same interview, Ellie confesses to only ditching Heavy and Omega not because Heavy is a predator, but because they didn't want to keep Ellie's delusion of a happy online Splatoon family. Tina decided to explain call Omega out on Twitter, and Omega called Tina the R word, and apparently then after that, both Heavy and Spider unfriended Tina, while Tina was just explaining what was going on while Omega was acting like... It was like, it was childish, and yeah. really stupid, and when I saw that and like, looked at the messages on Twitter, I was just shocked and horrified, and I just felt like this huge wave of realization slapped me, like, in the face, and I then realized I had to get out. It wasn't until that I then realized I was hanging out with the wrong people. People started to slowly realize what kind of person Elegadelia is but not quite enough people to make much of a difference. So, here we have the rise. But the fall is where things become... quite interesting. Okay, so so upon doing further research, uh, I found the uh, Medi Excalibur videos, as he has unlisted them rather than deleted them. Uh, I'll put the links in the description, and uh, if... if uh, Medi ever finds out about this and he says like yo, okay, could you take them down, you know, then so be it So they are there But they might not always remain there On with the video At this point not enough people bring up the fact that Ellie used to be in team downfall Yes, that team downfall the people who are the main reason for what I am doing now on YouTube since I already have a video up about that era of TDF, link below and in the card, I'll keep this one short. When Ellie joined, it was to show that people that TDF covered could redeem themselves. <laughs> it's like the fine wine, monsieur. I mention this because even then, after Ellie faked a suicide, people were still willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. Oh wait, excuse me, I didn't mention she faked a suicide? People were still willing to give her the benefit of the doubt, even more so than with any other of the predators that this community has ever seen. People really wanted Ellie to be left unscathed. And to be fair, whilst the fake suicide is nothing to take lightly, she did trivialize the loss of human life in doing so, remember, she hadn't done anything illegal at that time. And that coming from me should say something. But 
We also have to keep in mind that at this point, Ellie was still a child. So you could argue that Ellie didn't quite know what she was doing. I would never say that, but there are plenty of people who would. But such an excuse can only be used for so long. If Jeff wasn't even shy about his sexual transgressions, then the one to hide all trace of their transgressions would be tech Canadian Spartan. So, in early September 2019, TCS was called out for being a bad and manipulative boyfriend, using his child audience to witch on people he didn't like, and sending pornography to people under the age of 18. Now, by September, people were slowly starting to forget about Ellie's idiocy. After all, after the downfall video and pick surprises channel check on her in late 2018, Ellie was not relevant to the mainstream anymore. And that is something which she just cannot stand by the looks of it. So, she described what TCS did as truly disgusting in her own words. What could she possibly use as an excuse to take the side of the YouTuber with a mountain of subscribers over the people who happen to know how morality and the bloody law works this time around? The people who told me about it were mean to me. You know, it baffles me how people can be so disregarding of facts laid in front of their eyes just because of who is saying it. Nevertheless, Ellie enjoyed her five minutes of fame, posted a picture of herself in nothing but her underwear on Twitter, and anyone with two functioning brain cells had one more reason to dislike her. It's important to know that by this point, she was 18 years old, so a functioning adult by law. It's also very important to realise that TCS is dumb. And I mean, who boy is he dumb. Because after already being exposed for borderline pedophilia with the sending porn to minors and all, he didn't think it might be a good idea to lay low for a bit, oh no no. Shortly after, he was found in a not safe for work server which had not only people under the age of 18 in it, and you know what, that in of itself isn't even the problem. If there's just a group of consenting adults pretending to have sex with each other whilst taking the form of 14 year old children, who happen to be squids, that is fine. But note how I said adults. Yeah, there's children in that server according to the Dropbox and the screenshots. Well, I say are, but the youngest two have already left. But the fact that they got in regardless is... a bit noncy. The minors in the server were, and I'm quoting the Dropbox here, Cute Yoshi Lover, currently 17, and still in the server without a problem. Apparently she requested to be in it herself. Genesis has been in the server twice. The first time when he was 16, then the second time when he joined with Jeff when he was 17, not on the server anymore. Namasita46, at the time, 14 years old, the age proof was taken during the Jov case a few months back, not on the server anymore. You might remember her as the girl who Jov jacked off to. Tetra Kaden, at the moment, 17 years old, still in the server. Which is to say that the members were having erotic roleplays with and sending porn to minors. But this was also a server where Ellie Gedelia was active in. Oh dear. And like all people who get caught, she made an apology on Twitter. But the apology is pretty much invalidated because not even two tweets into the threat she already plays the victim. But that doesn't matter for people like Ellie. Because they have hordes and hordes of brainless people who will defend them at whatever cost. Just because these people happen to like the content that Ellie makes. And I'll get into Ellie's content later. So, these people fuel Ellie's ego to the point where she, in her own words, blocks people because they accuse her of something she did not do or were extremely rude to her. Completely neglecting the issue that the people who are rude to her are simply outraged by the fact that she is involved with something which is objectively horrible and she is getting off without a scratch. People want consequence for such life choices, Ellie. But I know people like you don't like consequence. Now, I want to be 100% clear about this. And this is all my personal opinion. Despite being caught in a server where she was sending porn to and having erotic roleplays with minors, I don't think Ellie is into kids. I think Ellie is simply too lustful to care about the age of the person she's having erotic roleplays with. In other words, I think she's simply too dumb to ask questions before acting. I think it's simply a matter of whoever is compliant and children just happen to be very compliant. So a predator, no doubt, but I don't think she's into kids. And you'd think that all of this, you know, the being in a porn server with minors, 
would be the final nails in her coffin. But some people just can't stop themselves from digging a deeper hole. So far we have exposing one predator but hiding another, concealing facts in regards to said predators, faking a suicide, disregarding facts about an entirely different predator, and having erotic roleplays with and sending porn to children, making her also a predator. There's a theme here. And yet people still defend this woman. Because that's what she is now, remember? A woman. She isn't that little girl who warned us about a predator, oh no no no. She is now a fully grown woman who excuses such behaviour as long as the predator is a friend of hers. Now, let's finish this. On the 22nd of May 2020, a video was uploaded by the YouTube user General Salty. This video was a recording of a voice chat between Ellie and a real life friend of her. The conversation took place on the 2nd of February 2020. So, Elizabeth, are you going to go through with what? this? Are you going to go through with this? Are you going to go through with this? Probably if you keep if you stop if you stop bugging the shit out of me. Well, right now because you just threatened me, you're going to sue me. So, you literally revealed all my private information. Private information that should have been revealed a long time ago. The conversation is a whole lot of nothing with little nuggets of interest and information in between. So I do implore everyone to watch the video for themselves. What is important is that it sparked Ellie to upload an apology, as she calls it her long-awaited apology. The video is, as with most things Ellie says, a lot of fluff. She is, however, very much insistent on not remembering anything about the NSFW server. <sighs> like... I honestly should have done my research, like, there was this one server, I think it, I believe it was an NSFW server, this happened like a long time ago, my memory is honestly foggy because it's, I kind of honestly forgot, but I do know this, like, here's what I'm able to remember, apparently there was a bunch of popular people there, well, not popular, it was mostly popular Splatoon YouTubers from what I was able to gather not like the Antastic or uh, Gabriel gaming or anything like no, 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 I think it was just like, you know animators Gmod animators from What I remember Was it? Yeah, it was. Now isn't that just strange? Because you clearly seem to remember threatening pristine with a lawsuit Yes, that is the correct term and that happened on the 2nd of February So why do you struggle so much to remember? something which you quote-unquote apologized for a mere month earlier. The most interesting thing about this video, by a long shot, was the comment section. And I say was because in true I don't like receiving negative criticism fashion, Ellie privatized the video within a few hours of uploading it, but I'll get to that. But where was I? Ah yes, the comments. They are indeed quite special, for this marks the first time when I saw a Splatoon YouTuber's apology video with an overwhelming amount of people not accepting the apology. Let's just read through some of the best ones, shall we? Ellie, you're the reason this community has so much drama. You were one of the many Heavy the Squid fans who exploited their affiliation with him back in 2016 to boost morale, and so you push your agenda of degeneracy so the community can be flooded with perverts and pedos everywhere. You will never be forgiven for flooding the community with criminals. I would like to add that she now is one of said criminals. To all of these kids in the comments, this is not okay. This is in fact illegal and a crime to engage in sexual acts with a minor. No matter how you twist or rationalize her actions, it is a crime. Don't justify this or instantly forgive. This is wrong. If you idolize her or are friends with her, find a better idol and friend. Trust me, she's a bad influence. Perfect. Simply perfect. You have literally done things that are criminal offences, and you think that we're all just gonna brush it off and everything is gumdrops and ice cream? You have no idea how much you have endangered so many people. And if you think you can just brush it off, your chances of changing are slim to none. If you want to truly change, I advise you to get off the internet entirely. It's obviously not going to help you, it hasn't before, so why would it now? Take a long, long break, and actually take time to fix yourself up. Adieu. I couldn't have said it better myself, really. 
But the true hero of the comment section would be this Link person. Now this comment is a bit long to read in full, seeing how it uses timestamps to make a point. So I'll just leave it up on screen for you for a bit, and you can get the gist of it. Now, if you remember, Ellie privatized the video only a few hours after uploading it, which means that people now cannot see it. Which means that the people who were only willing to listen to Ellie's side of the story, yes, those morons exist, will now have a very hard time getting the information about the NSFW server straight from the horse's mouth. Wouldn't it be oh so useful if we got Ellie to actually give more insight on the matter? Why, hello. Now, I want you to know that this video is one and a half hours long. With that in mind, let's have a listen, shall we? Wait, so, uh, so you need to tell me that TCS sent, uh, nudes to a minor? Um... No, well, I don't well, really know. Well, actually, I... From what I gathered, yes, but like I said, I don't know. But don't take my word for it. Then take my word for it. Or better yet, how about we take Mocha's word for it? You know, the girl who exposed Joe for being a filthy nonce, and the one who had to endure TCS's idiocy whilst he was with his fake girlfriend? Basically, as you guys know, TCS, or our little Canadian friend, has had a little bit of a problem not sharing around his relationship and his sex life and other sexual aspects you should not talk to, to about to minors. To, well, minors! Me, for example, Pornby and Layla, two people who are sticking up to him, most likely for attention and for fame, which I <laughs> will not do because in other communities I have plenty of attention and plenty of recognition. TCS has sent me plenty of porn that he has created, and his girlfriend's nudes for matter of fact. And in a group chat, he sent minors in a group chat, Layla and her 13 year old boyfriend girlfriend thing, and Plornby who was like 15, 16, I don't fucking know, all I know is they're all little kids. And TCS himself said that he didn't know that Plornby and Layla were underage. Uh, okay. But he knew I was underage, and he couldn't make an excuse for that because literally everyone was saying it 24-7. So it's a bit strange how you're all so willing to defend TCS at that time, without knowing the full story. Once again goes to show how you only stick with people for the clout they have. Basically, I was in this NSFW server, and I was told that, you know, people there were 18 plus only. However, they... They weren't being honest with me, and someone apparently who was there was not 18 plus. They were actually 17. So, really? yeah. So you know that they pretty much not only lied to my face. So like pretty much. So pretty much like since uh, you were involved, since you were, and, since you were in the channel, people think that you you you're like a pedophile. All right. Yes. It is somewhat important to note that Ellie was not the one who created that porn server. Ghost of Time was the one who created it. However, just because she's not the one who made it, does that mean that Ellie is not one of the legal adults who should take responsibility for that server and should thusly take responsibility over the fact that there were minors in a porn server? I mean, I'm not trying to make an excuse or anything, I'm just saying this, like... When you think about it, like, when you first join a community, is, do you, is there even an instru instruction booklet of how to make friends? How to get known in the community? There isn't. See, that's the issue with you. You just want to get known. And you want to get known using whatever method works. But you don't want to learn how to animate, do you? You don't want to invest time in becoming a better person in one aspect of life, do you? Because all the Splatoon-related content on your channel was made by other people. Even your channel trailer, which is as simple as your avatar sitting in a chair, was made by Zippy Thick. So rather than getting known because of your skill, you realized it was easier to get known for being friends with people who are already popular, who all happen to be animators. Can you even imagine how easy your life would have been if you were a nobody, Ellie? If you were not in the position to engage with the people who have a literal sex ring? No, of course you can't. Because all you want to be is popular. I mean, I'm just saying this right now. I do regret the things I've done. But... Okay. Uh, 
I'm not going to let that hold me down. I'm right. I'm going to keep moving and keep improving myself as a person. Give any of us one reason to believe that you are a better person now than when you were before you joined this platoon community. They say mistakes are a way to improve yourself. Like, it's yeah. deep stuff like that, I really... <clears throat> I am not the best at explaining stuff. I really... Okay. No, Ellie, you cannot explain it without making yourself not look like the person who is clearly in the wrong. I don't know what to do. But at the same time... It feels like no matter what I say, I feel like I'm called out for saying something like, No, you... Like, I really don't know how to explain this, but... I guess I just feel like I'm being gaslit everywhere. It's... The only reason for people to call you out for something is if you have said something wrong. So it is quite manipulative of you to immediately call any such criticism gaslighting. In a funny way, what you're doing now is gaslighting. Geo crazy, right? I heard a lot of stuff about him. He's What's my that? friend. Is he just your friend? Um, I heard a lot of good stuff and bad stuff about him. I heard that he sent feet pics to random people. Was that true? Um, no, I think it was the other way around. Well, uh, I don't remember. So you don't remember these? But apparently you just made an apology video and then deleted it, I think. Actually, it was privated, mainly because I received more than enough feedback. Like... So you pretty much got, like, a lot of dislikes, and then you just delete the video. No, I privated it. There's a difference. Does that make a difference? We still cannot see the video, but I think you and I both know that said feedback was actually negative criticism. And that's one of those things you just don't like. Wait, so did you say that uh, Geo Craze is still, like, one of your best friends? Of course he is. Well, I'm, I mean, I heard about him. I heard that he was a good guy, that he's cool. And I heard a lot about how people are trying to expose him for petty stuff. I don't know. I mean, what do you people, think about him? People are just going to be dumb like that, but I can't really. You Dumb? Dumb? We try to keep predators and pedos away from this community, and you call that dumb? I mean... <sighs> Look, I know what I did was wrong, and I do deeply regret what I've done, but I'm not gonna mope around and let that haunt me forever. That is strange. Just a minute ago, you said you don't remember anything of what you did. <laughs> Something is not adding up. Um, who would dare? I think you need to actually talk to some of your family members, okay? And just talk to your best friends, you know? I don't have any. Uh, uh, looking at your... Oh, no, I'm talking about in real life. Friends. They... Well, if you don't have any in real life, then just talk to people on Discord. So... <laughs> like, we're telling you to do right all now. these things, but you're do just you refusing. I have time to... Single look through every single person when most of well, the people say to to about me is the same. Go you kill yourself. You don't have to you talk to everybody. That's what I, they've been saying. Not, that is not I'm criticism. Down. They're just being blunt, and I'm that's talking. not helpful. Yes, yes, that is helpful. You like cats, so I'll use a cat analogy. <clears throat> if your cat was drowning in the river, and three people tell you about it, Ellie, your cat is drowning. Ellie, your cat is drowning. Ellie, your cat is drowning, then that is helpful. But if you don't do anything those three times, another person comes along saying, That fucking cat of yours is drowning, dumbass! Can I swear on this? It's my own video. And then again, the first section was already censored, so... That is still objectively helpful, since they give the same helpful information. It additionally helps to give an indication how people are now officially done with your lies. But... It's negative, and you don't like that. So you immediately just space out. That is something which a child does, Ellie. You are not a child anymore. You're almost 20, for heaven's sake. I'm not trying to fake any of this. 
I'm not trying to fake my memory loss. I just legit can't remember everything, and there's only so much I can process before it gets too much, you know? Maybe you should watch this video to refresh your mind. Nah, who am I kidding? She doesn't watch any videos criticizing her. She just tells other people that the video is rude. Ergo, don't watch it. Allegedly. I mean, I... I would, I would love to talk to those pe people who are criticizing me, but... How is leaving the internet? How is... How is killing myself going to solve anything? All of the bad things you have done were enabled by the internet. And the name, Ellie Gedelia. What you need is to take away that which enables you to do these bad things. So, you would ditch Twitter, ditch YouTube, and preferably get a new Discord account and permanent new name, because Ellie Gedelia shall never get away from her own actions. Nobody would have cared about these actions if you were a nobody. But you wanted to be somebody so badly, you made yourself into a community figure. And with that comes responsibility. And if you are not ready to handle such responsibilities, you are not ready to be someone like Ellie Gedelia as she is now. And how dare you accuse people of wanting you dead? That is a despicable thing to say and an even more disgusting thing to accuse other people of. But what else do I expect? from the person who introduced fake suicides as a concept into this community. So that was most of the fat trim to get to the meat of the voice chats. I have a few more topics in my notes, but those are all minor, and this video is already long enough as it is, so uh, let's just wrap it up and move on. What? A wild ride this has been, from a girl who gained the support of thousands by exposing a pedo to a borderline pedo herself. Why do people give Ellie so many chances? Well, I'll tell you. It's because they are afraid. Ellie is part of their perfect vision of the world, and without Ellie, they fear they will miss out on things in life. Not like those people have made it this far into the video either way, but I digress. There are so many people better than Ellie. Skilled people. Honest people. And you are looking for something Ellie cannot provide. I think Ellie's problem isn't so much malice, it's laziness and quite frankly dim-wittedness. And in trying to cover these things up she manipulates her way to the top. A good liar is unpredictable. A lazy liar is dangerous. I nevertheless would like to see some proper consequence for Ellie. One day. As for me, well, I think it would be best if Ellie was to leave the internet for a good long time at least. An actual hiatus. But not like my opinion matters to Ellie and her goons, because they will just group me up with the people who want Ellie dead. And I know I didn't say it in the beginning of the video, but guys, please don't go and harass Ellie. J just don't. It will feed into a victim mentality and she's not worth your time. If you could spread this video everywhere instead, that would be great though. I also have to apologize for two things. First of all, I cannot show most of the chat logs between Ellie and Joff, as they are just truly disturbing. So I also cannot link them in the description. And that goes for a lot of stuff actually. Uh, a lot of things Ellie does are lewd slash sexual by nature. So of course I cannot show them here on YouTube. Secondly, I apologize if I got anything wrong or if I missed something. Uh, like I said, there were a lot of minor topics I could have covered, but I, I didn't deem them too necessary for this video because it, it was already is 30 minutes long. But if this video gets enough attention and there's enough demand for it, which I honestly doubt, I could do a Q&A about like, various things you have questions about, internet historian style. So if you have questions, I will write them down and then possibly make a second video about those questions. So all that's left for me to do is to thank the people who've helped out tremendously with this video. Uh, there'd be the seven deadly boomers, in particular Dank Pirates, Blazin and Kirin. 
They provided most evidence, including, but not limited to, the uh, stuff about the NSFW server, the uh, lewd house, it was called, and the chat logs between Ellie and Jelf. General Salty for his work and involvement with the video about Ellie and Pristine. Pristine herself, because she was willing to put up with a lot of questions and the such, and just in general Ellie Gidelia's bullshit. And Lol Attack for his involvement with this project, and for his blessing to call this video a downfall. I cannot thank him enough, frankly, he is a huge inspiration. And finally, all of you who watched the video all the way through, I never say this, but if you could leave a like, that'd be brilliant. I put quite a lot of effort into this one, so if you enjoy what you see, please head over to my main channel, Flying Scott, where I do videos like this and much more. Uh, I also anime, actually, so um, if you're into that, I can provide such content too. Uh, most of the drama goes on this channel, Tea with Caramel, though. Uh, 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 follow Tea with Caramel on Twitter. Uh, I don't know how this basic YouTube stuff works. Uh, so yeah, guys, please share, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Hit that bell! <laughs> uh... I will see you chads in the next video. I've run out of tea. Um I uh, just want just want to remind you that like I am fully okay with it being called um <coughs> downfall part three. <laughs> That's a very foolish thing to say when you know that I always have recording on.